What's up everybody? This is Rob Shack. So today we're doing another video in my Gran Turismo 3 Rivals series. We're going to be comparing the Mercedes-Benz CLK Touring Car D2 AMG. Beautiful looking car. Compare that to the Austra Opel or Vauxhall Austra Touring Car. Opel in this game because it's in the PAL. And then the Opel Calibra Touring Car misspelled as the Caribra in the little menu. So that's pretty funny. So we'll start with the uh, CLK Touring Car. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share. Help me get to a thousand subs. If you're new to the channel, what I do when I do these videos, if you're watching this video, hopefully you are because you clicked on it. This is the rival series I do. I drive every car on Complex Stream, talk about each one. Uh, Complex Stream because it's a unique GT3 circuit, why not? And then try to get my a good lap time for each car. Then I will do a AI race where all three of the cars are in it, which is going to be easy because all three cars are in the like German touring car cup thing. So I'll just do one of those with those three cars in it. And then I'll just do a lap or whatever and then compare how they do because the AI can drive cars poorly and that can throw off their little thing. So, but I drive it with me first because that's the bigger uh, thing that matters, honestly. But it's just kind of interesting to see how the AI do too. But yeah, so we'll start with the Mercedes-Benz CLK Touring Car from the D2 AMG. It's based on the CLK that's in the game because it literally has the same, it's the exact same car from the CLK uh, AMG car that's in this game. It's just the tuned version because you can literally see the little logo. It has the logo on the back, which I can show later, but I want to, I'm driving the car live, so I don't want to screw it up too much because this car, I don't want to... <laughs> throw off the uh, time of the lap too much. Obviously, it's gonna be hard to drive each car the exact same way. But, um, well, first thing you're gonna notice with these cars is they're very, very similar. All three of them are very, very similar. Um, it's gonna be a little bit, I mean, they're very, they're, the rival thing that I talk about with this game is still gonna hold true here. But I think with all three of these cars, you're gonna see that they're all very, very similar. It's gonna be really hard to actually find a difference between them. Um, being touring cars, they're all very, very grippy very good tuned um they're pretty terrible when they're not tuned their top speeds are really bad and their uh handling isn't very good and all that stuff but because they're kind of geared towards a slower situation the uh handling is a little bit rough with the cars because that's the hardest thing to modify for um you see it says clk 55 amg on the back which is exactly what is in this game so that's pretty funny but um yeah so these cars have a lot of grip it's a little bit harder to control them when they <clears throat> when they are tuned up because the car is. Uh, I don't have to mess up the mess with the suspension and all that stuff to make it better, but I don't really do that super much when I make the videos on these cars. So you can kind of see that the car slides around a little bit more than it should, but that's fine. Um, these cars are overall very fast, very good. They're not, they're kind of in this weird limbo spot where you can't really use. A touring car like this against the like R390 because it would get destroyed but it's also way better than the rally cars in the game so there's this special little niche group of cars in this game and it is these German touring cars and I think you can throw the like Gillet Vertigo in there and like the Tickford Falcon but I'm just those are that's another rival series we'll do that later but uh this race we're only going to focus on the cars that literally have touring car in the name because they're all very similar in terms of performance um as I then drive the car straight off the road, because I thought I was not paying attention to the little uh, circuit thing, I thought I had finished doing my little, whatever these are, figure eight type weaving things, but we still have like four more, I wasn't paying attention. But um, yeah, the G uh, CLK is very good, uh, very fast, very good handling. Um, it looks good, sounds good. I mean, we all know that the sound winner is gonna be the Calibra because it's like, so high pitched and it has incredible RPM. So there's no contest who's going to win the uh, sound one. I mean, we all saw that coming. It's going to be this Opel Calibra because they put so much effort into making that car sound so crazy weird. And it's accurate because that's how much, that's what it sounds really weird in real life, too. So um, just sounds like a kind of like a Formula One car, honestly. But uh, in terms of handling and stuff like that, I really don't know. This car seems like it does a good job of generally staying on the track, but if you, it seems like it's got a little bit of a sliding going on. I think what's going to end up being is, I'm just off of my speculation here. Y'all can all, you know, also analyze this yourself and see if you 
if I'm right. If you agree with me at the end of this video, I'll talk about it later. But I'm going to call that the Opal Ostra is the one that has the most handling. The uh, CLK is the middle ground. And then the Calibra is the power and kind of crazy handling one. That's kind of my vibe off the bat. Because I feel like the Ostra is the new... Well, the Ostra and the CLK are the same age. The Calibra is a lot older. But I would just... I feel like that's kind of how they're going to rate these cars. I'm curious if that's going to be right. It may be one of those things where it's going to be too hard to tell. But that's just kind of my initial thought, thoughts. Because this car has great handling. But it doesn't seem quite where I want it to be. But it also seems really quick. The car doesn't really slow down. It has good... Uh, Acceleration doesn't have a lot of turbo lag when it downshifts or when it's about to shift. It kind of just holds strong. Um, good handling, looks good, but yeah, again, the sound is always going to go to the Calibro. There's no contest there, but yeah, this car seems like it has really good handling. But if you try to slide it too much, it's going to not work out so well. So now we'll move on to the Astra. All right, now we're moving on to the Opel Astra touring car. It, doesn't, it says Opal Team Phoenix. It does not say D2 AMG Mercedes, but even though it's a D2 car. Um, we'll see how this thing does. I'm assuming that this will be the one that has the best grip. It just kind of looks like it based on how it is, and I'm pretty sure I've driven it, and I feel like it's going to have more grip. We'll see. But um, it's got a lot of German on it because it is a German car. Uh, looks sick. Awesome. I love that they got the license for these cars, especially they wrote the little team like Opal Team Phoenix on there is sick to have that in the like name. I just think that's cool. Um, so let's see how we do here. This car seems like it, I, I think I'm, I'm thinking that my implications of the Opal Ostra might be right. This car seems very, very planted on the circuit, very hard to sway. I just, I mean, on that first corner, it's, that's not a lot of time, so we'll see if that actually works out. But it uh, seems like it's power is slower like i kind of also expected there and especially when it got into the upper gears it was kind of struggling there more than i was expecting from oh I mean, it's what i expected but it seems like it is a little bit harder to get the power down when it's higher up in speed so it seems like the clk is going to have better uh, top speed and yeah i'm noticing right away as i take these little figure eight things this thing is so planted it's like i'm actually i was not expecting it to be this grip have this much grip on it it is very difficult to shake this car. I'll try to kind of like take corners aggressively and see if I can make it kind of slide out a little bit. But so far, this car really is uh, has handling like for days up in here. So we'll see how this thing does. Um, it's very hard to shake it though. Obviously on these corners, these are not realistic corners. So it's a little bit harder to stay under control here. But compared to the CLK, this car has way better handling. It is very difficult to make this car uh, spin its tires or slide out at all. It took going on weird boxy corners to make that happen and we'll see if it keeps happening when I get to more normal corners again. But yeah, this car is very, uh, has a lot of good handling. But I'm noticing, yeah, it does not accelerate very quickly compared to the CLK. Now for, it is a little bit weaker, but it seems like it's a lot weaker than how little, how close their powers are. It seems like it shouldn't be this noticeable, but it seems very noticeable that this car struggles in its uh, efficient usage of the power. It seems like its wheels kind of slide out a little bit, but it stays under control, which is kind of cool. Um, it seems like there's a lot more turbo lag when it gets near the top of its, uh, near the top and near the bottom of its gears. That could be more of a just me changing the transmission thing, but uh, I have a very similar uniform standard for how I tune these cars up and it's just to make it where they hit their sixth gear on that straightaway on the max speed test so that's kind of like where I am at with this thing but um so it does seem like it has a little bit more of a turbo lag situation even if I I guess it would be better if you just used a manual and then shifted the gears the way that they that would be best for its use of power but even then like if you're redlining to get more efficient use of power then that's going to be reflected in how I describe these cars like if the CLK doesn't need to do that, and the Opel Astra does, then the Opel Astra is not going to be as good with top speed. Just It's just not going to be, because to do that every time would not be an efficient use of power. So, I mean, But this car does grip very, very well. It doesn't really slide. It slides out a little bit, but it doesn't really slide out to the point that you're like, yeah, now it's clearly not going as fast. It seems like it stays very planted, has a lot of grip. It seems very controlled, very reserved, and it's... Uh, 
steering. So it's a good car. Uh, honestly, they're all going to be good. Um, every, as I've always said, when I talk about these things, I'm not saying that the Astra is a good car and the CLK is not a good car or the Calibra is not a good car because they're all good cars compared to everything else. Like any touring car in this game is going to beat like 80% of the cars in the game because it's going to beat pretty much any road car except for like the GT1 and the R390 in a race on a corner on a course that's technical. It's going to beat them all every day. Top speed, that's a whole different situation. So yeah, I don't think it would beat these cars. Probably wouldn't beat the Viper in a top speed, but you know, complex string, it probably would beat the Viper. So I uh, just kind of hit that little, what is that called? We hit the little red and white thing and that slid me out there, but that's fine. Uh, still, this car is very, very planted, very good in handling, kind of weak in top speed, which also probably contributes to it having better handling is it's taking these corners slower than the CLK would. So that might be another reason why it's handling is better. But I think even then, like, it's very hard to unsettle this car, and that's a good sign for this car. Um, taking turns aggressively, it still stays on the circuit, slides out a little bit, but way more manageable than the CLK. I'm thinking I'm gonna have a much better lap time here. Even though I did go off the road with the CLK, with this car, I mean, like I'm able to just keep the power on and take corners like that. Like that, that you couldn't do with the CLK. Or if you did, it would be very difficult to do. So this car's good, very good. Um, Still a very close lap time between the um, CLK and the Opel Astra, so that's proof that they're very similar and that there's not a lot of difference between these cars, but I'm just going off of how I feel. So now let's go into the Calibra as I spin around just to kind of celebrate. All right, now we're moving on to the Opel Calibra touring car. This thing is very unique. I love this car. Sound design is incredible for this thing. It also looks really cool. I like the way it looks. I like the front of it and the back of it. So it's like, that's pretty much like the, all that you really care about when you're looking at a car like this. Its logos are a lot simpler than the Astra. So this car is older. So maybe they weren't doing as well back then or they didn't have as many sponsors or whatever. RPMs are ridiculous. The fact that it's got 14, 16, we're, RPM, we're revving at very, very high amounts, which is why the car sounds like this. Um, it kind of sounds like the 77, 787B, honestly, which is pretty great. Um, again, love that car, so I'm not like bummed about that at all. Um, I'm seeing that its power, it seems like its power is a little bit more efficient than the, um, than the, whatchamacallit, the Astra, because it seems like it's just kind of going a little bit more efficient. Um, it's, so that's interesting, because it is technically lower in power, it has less horsepower than either of the other two cars. Uh, that I've done so far, the CLK and the Astra. This car should have a lower top speed than both of them, but I, I'm kind of leaning it's not going to. I think it's going to be actually pretty fast. Um, handling kind of is rough with this car. I'm struggling to keep this thing on the track. It seems a little bit like sluggish in its handling. It doesn't steer quite as quickly. It's not as uh, sensitive. So again, if you like cars like this, then you're probably going to enjoy it. I actually enjoy cars like this, but I'm trying to view this as unbiased as possible. I would rather drive the Opel Calibra over the other two, but I think this car has worse handling. It also seems like the brakes are a lot worse. I have to brake a lot earlier. Um, it seems much less responsive, um, especially with turning on these tight corners. It seems like it's really struggling to stay close, but as I've said before, I think the hand, the hand that's what I thought, and I think it's kind of ending up to be true. Although I could just be, again, biased by looking at it this way. Uh, gotta love that quick wrong way sign there as I took that turn super wide. But um, yeah, the power on this thing is very good, very efficient use of power. It seems like it really can kind of go pretty quick. Doesn't seem like it slows down much. It might not have a better top speed because its horsepower is lower, but it seems like in its lower gears, it can really, it is very, very quick compared to the two cars that have more horsepower than it. It seems really impressive that it can actually hold its own in terms of power. So it's gonna be interesting to see which one has a better top speed because I think it might not have a better top speed than those two cars, but it would probably have a better, uh, faster 1000 km kilometers. It might be faster in like a dash, like a drag. This car might be better, but I mean, again, we'll get there when we get there. That'll be at the end of the video. So this thing is very interesting, honestly. I, it's a very unique car, which is why I think I like it. It's 
a car that's a little bit harder to control, which I'm all about that. I love trying to learn how to master a car that's harder to control. That makes it really fun and it's a nice challenge. So good, good times with this car uh, as I just totally lose control of it a lot here. Still, I'm having a good time with it. It's cool that cars are so uniquely different in this game that they took the time to, you know, program these cars to be more and more accurate to their real-life counterparts. I kind of expected this car to be faster or better with its top speed, but out of control because it's like five or six years younger or older than the uh, CLK and the Austria. I think this car is a 94. Maybe it's a 92. I can't remember exactly when this car came out, but it's an early 90s uh, DTM car compared to a um, 2000s, which both the Austra and the CLK are both in the, a 2000 car. So I kind of wouldn't expect, I wouldn't be surprised. And also there's like less regulation, so I wouldn't be surprised as well that the speed is good given that it's gonna be a little bit more, uh, more aggressive with its use of power, which is why I think that this car is, I mean, think about that with the like Group B rally cars, they have like 400 horsepower, but they have insane zero to 60s. Like it's faster than anything else that's, like the Lancia Delta S4 is better than like anything. So you've just got a lot of good chances with that. But um, so yeah, I'm gonna just keep this car as close as I can to the apex. It's difficult to do because this car is super powerful and struggles to stay straight and also struggles to corner very well, but it is very good. I like this car. Um, the sound design would always go to the Opel um, Calibra, but I think in terms of the actual like best car if you like a car with better handling the Austria would be for you if you want a contrast between the Calibra and the Austria then go with the CLK I personally would use the CL or the Calibra because I like cars that are out of control but I think if you really wanted to have a balanced experience with one of these cars like if you're trying to w decide which car to use in that race if you're doing a playthrough I would pick the CLK I think it would be the best car to use in that race the German Touring Car Tour Cup I think this would be a little bit harder to steer and harder to control. That's just my opinion. But uh, the Opal's still very fun, and it sounds ridiculous. I love how it sounds. I love that its RPMs are so high. But um, yeah, it's a good time. So we'll see how I did. I actually don't remember the times that I had with the other two. So we'll see if I actually beat them. Because if I actually beat them, that would be hilarious, because that means that I do well with cars that have no handling. So that'd be really funny. So we'll see now. Let's check it out. Alrighty, here we go. So this is a replay of the race. I've got an Austra, a CLK, another CLK, a Calibra, and then another Austra in the front here. I am also driving a Calibra, so this worked out well because it was 2-2-2, two, two, and two, which is kind of what I wanted to see here. So this race was honestly not what I expected at all from the AI on this race. I did not expect this at all. So Calibra takes an early lead, showing that there's a lot of power there. But then does a terrible first turn, which again, not ex not at all what I was not expecting there. Everybody is kind of clumping up now because the Calibra, even though he did a terrible turn, he kind of blocked everybody. So now they're all cat gathering behind him. Um, the AI are very aggressive on this course. Austro pulling and the CLK slamming the Calibra from first all the way down to fifth. I'm in sixth. I was just chilling in the back. So I was like, okay, well, I guess the Calibra is going to do terrible. But then the Calibra just bumps the Austro here. CLK and Austria are bumping each other in second here. So I'm like, all right, this is kind of aggressive. I'm just chilling in the back watching as they all fight each other out here. Um, Calibra tries to get close to the CLK, misses the bump, misses the savage bump there and goes off the course. Now he's following, falling back into fifth, uh, pushing the back of the Austria. Austria and CLK are fighting up there. Uh, it's just crazy. So I come up behind them. I bump the uh, Calibra, bump the Austria, give them both a boost of speed. I want them to stay close. And then I just proceed to drive through the grass, pull everybody out wide just to kind of keep the race interesting. Um, everybody breaks, goes crazy. The CLK there goes way into the back. It's pretty hilarious. Uh, everybody is clumped up. They're pushing me all out of the way. I'm trying to get in front of people. So then I get shoved, so then I shove the CLK. Everyone's getting all petty and I am involved in it. I should have stayed above it, but it was fun. So then I just go, all right, well, I'm gonna get out of the way. I'm in front now. Calibra makes a huge dive bomb. I do a terrible turn. Both of them trying to push me out of the way. They both miss, which is pretty funny. 
Uh, now they're like four abreast upon a, one of the worst turns. I do another terrible turn. They all push me. Now I'm getting involved. I get knocked off the course there. I didn't want to get involved anymore. I wanted to get away from everybody, but everyone starts shoving me. The Calibra is now way in the back again. I was like, this is it. This is where the Calibra falls apart. Um, I was expecting him to stay back here, but then everyone does a stupid turn. The Calibra comes through, actually shoves me. I was not expecting him to be that close because I saw him in sixth. Then I just go, all right, I got to get out of here. So I use my speed. Just, oh, uh, yeah, I also shoved that Ostrich because he messed me up and it made me mad. Not really. I was just playing. So now we have, uh, upon the entry of the last lap, both CLKs are in last. The Calibra and the Ostras are battling for second. Then the CLK comes up, does a big shove, knocks the Calibra off the road. Now the Calibra is all the way from fourth to sixth. I was like, okay, here we go. This is what I expected. Everyone's going to shove the Calibra because his handling is not good. But his speed is kick kicking in, though. He's coming back, coming in hot. The Ostras are battling for second. CLKs are battling for fourth. And then the Calibra is now going to shove one of the CLKs off the course. He is now well in sixth. I kind of thought, since I couldn't see this, I was like, for sure that was the Calibra. It's over. Calibra then bounces off the CLK, gets around the Ostra, now is running up in third, which is shocking. I was like, well, maybe... I mean, I didn't know this. I, at the time, I had no idea what was going on. So now the Calibra is pulling into second. The last time I looked at the little thing, it was the same Ostra was in second. So at this point, I have no idea that this is happening. The Calibra has taken second place is actually unbelievably holding second. So when I finished the race, I couldn't see anybody. Then I get the hilarious notification that second place was the Calibra. I had no idea that was what happened. It was ridiculous. So then now, I, I still think the Calibra is the worst car, but he just everyone shoved each other and it worked out for him. That's, I think, what happened there. So I wasn't expecting that at all. And it's, I don't know what to say. So now I'll do a max speed test of all of them, and we'll have this done. So thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of the video. Peace.